Give it up for Brad Stewart, everybody. Hey. Um, so, it's my favorite time of the year right now because the uh, Grammy Awards are coming up. And I fucking hate the Grammy Awards. Uh, and a lot of my comedy comes out of hatred. So, new material, everybody. All right, get ready. <laughs> so I'm a music. My favorite, besides comedy, music is my absolute favorite thing in, in, on, on earth. But it's, it's, I'm 36 now. There's so much stuff that I just like. I listen to old stuff now because the new stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure Drake is good. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm not, it's not for me anymore. You know. But like when I was a kid, you know, like my first cassette I ever bought. Yes, cassette. <laughs> Purple Rain by Prince. But I used to get lyrics wrong all the time. Like when I first heard when doves cry, I thought it was, maybe I'm just like my father, Leopold. <laughs> I was like, what did you say? I said, Leopold. Then is that, is it King Leopold, the prince's father's name? I don't, so no, it's, it's, it's too bold. I'm like an idiot. Yes, yes I am. The funniest thing that annoys me the most is when someone like loves a song, but they only know one part of the song, so they sing that part relentlessly. Like growing up, my mom, you know that show Designing Women? You don't, you girls definitely don't know that show, but <laughs> it was in the 80s, and the theme song was uh, Georgia On My Mind, which my mom loved that song, but she would walk around the house like, Georgia, 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 Georgia. <laughs> Georgia. So mom, learn the rest of the song. Or please get Georgia off of your mind. But I did, yeah, I, I looked at the Grammy nominees knowing that I'm just gonna be filled with white hot hatred and it sure, sure enough, it worked. I'm like going, okay, well, who's album of the year this year? And actually it's not as bad as past years. This year, like, album of the year, like the Arcade Fire, who I enjoy, that's fine. That's like the Grammys going, yeah, we're hip with the kids, you know, like throwing that one out there. And, uh, and Eminem, that's, he's talented, you know, I, I'll, I'll back that up. I mean, he's 38, though, and still wears the baggy, that, that look. It just drives me uh, nuts. You see the kids with that? that cinched up like Lil Wayne, like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I thought the sideways hat was the most annoying thing. Nope, that's been knocked out the box, to use their vernacular. That thing, where their ass is hanging out, their underwear, I don't, I feel like I'm 90 years old, like, pull your pants out! I saw a kid on the LA bus like that. I'm like, you're sitting on an LA bus in your underwear. There's a blood stain right next to you. <laughs> the Grammy, and then uh, Lady Annabellum. It's not song of the year. Don't hate, really. You say don't hate, and you like Lady Annabellum. <laughs> I, hate, I hate all mainstream country music. I love old school country music. Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, Patsy Cline. People that sing about real country shit. This mainstream country music is just like people in their 30s and 40s that are too old to make pop music. Like, you're right, that's a pop song you wrote. Uh, but can you sing it like this? Because then we can sell it on country radio all day long. Like Taylor Swift, I'm not gonna knock Taylor Swift because I love Taylor Swift. She's just this, like a little cute little wood nymph. I don't, she's literally a fairy, isn't she? I mean, where in Narnia did you come from? But I'm not gonna knock her, but she makes pop music that is not country music. Country music is like Johnny Cash, you know, like Lady Antebellum, like those, like, it's quarter after one, I'm a little drunk and I need you now. A quarter after one, you're a little drunk, ooh, what a downward spiral. I want to hear a real country version of that song, a real country version of it. Quarter after four, coked up with a whore and I need you. I saved my least favorite for last. Katy Perry, Teenage Dream, nominated for Album of the Year. Yes, thank you. You're with me on that, hating on that. That's good. But, <laughs> Katy Perry, just first, when she first came out, she was annoying with that I Kissed a Girl song. You know, because first of all, that song was written already, like 17 years ago, by Jill Solview. But if you, when I started thinking about it, too, I Kissed a Girl was one of her songs. It was Jill Solview. California Girls is one of her songs, which is a Beach Boys title of the song. Teenage Dream is a T-Rex song title. What's her next song? Like Freebird? What the fuck? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but I, I was glad that summer was over because I didn't. I thought we didn't have to hear California Girls anymore. And then Grammys come up, and I'm hearing it all the time again. Yeah, that song is just annoying. It, it reminds you of really. It literally reminds me of like drunk, vapid California twat girls, like, like getting wasted and, and just talking about the most stupid shit. Like just looking around the room, like Steve Carell and Anchorman, you know, California girls. California's so hot. You're unforgettable. Daisy Dukes, bikini on top. <laughs> Though. The chorus of that song, it's sun kissed skin, so hot, we'll melt your popsicle. <laughs> that doesn't work on any level at all. But the way, if you take it literally, it's like, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, fuck. I was going to enjoy this delicious popsicle on this hot day, but your sun kissed skin just melted all over my hand. And no, I'm not turned on. No, I'm not going to wash this fucking shit off my hand. No, bye. Fuck off. Jesus. But if you take it, obviously, she's obviously speaking in metaphor. So what else could a popsicle be? It's like, go, oh, your sun kissed skin's so hot, you're going to melt my cock. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Is the melted popsicle option still available? Because I'll, I'll take that now. <laughs> but the Kiss the Girl was like the one that was the most annoying too. Because first of all, when it came out like last year, or 2009 or whenever, it acted like it was so provocative. Ooh, I kissed the girl, that's very provocative. Not in this day and age. Maybe she wrote, I fist the girl. <laughs> <laughs> like that too. Girls that act like they're gay, but they're not gay, just to get the attention of like inch deep frat guy fuckhead guys. You know? It's like, hey Katie, are you gay? No, I'm not. I never actually kissed a girl. I just wrote the song with Glenn Ballard, who worked on the Linus Morris set. Way too much information for that last part. I do know what I'm talking about. I know my hatred. I, I make sure to beat every detail of my hatred down. You know? <laughs> because no guy, there's no guy, there's guys that experiment in their life. They could never write a song like that. Or they could, but it would never go anywhere. It would be like, uh, I blew a guy, didn't like it. I'm filled with shame and regret. <laughs> but I, I, I do, I go backwards now. Like now, this year, I got obsessed with the Rolling Stones. I know that's really weird to hear because they've been around forever. They've been around my entire life, and I've always liked the Rolling Stones. But I, re I read Keith Richards' biography, which just yeah. made me obsessed after that. His biography is awesome. It's got so many great stories. Like, like Keith Richards wrote Satisfaction in his sleep. <laughs> he was wasted, like in Florida. Well, when, he, when wasn't he wasted? He was wasted. And he was like in a hotel, and he he played. <laughs> tape going and he totally forgot about it the next day woke up and heard it I'm like it's awesome I also heard that in his biography there was a story about him he was working on an album at night in the studio and he'd fallen asleep at the soundboard and this band came in to use the studio the next day and they couldn't wake him up at all so they put the they, they recorded drum tracks the day before so they put the drum tracks on and turned it all the way to 11 cranked it up boom, 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 boom. still wouldn't wake up but Keith's foot started keeping time <laughs> That's how you know that you're, when you're fucking cool. When stories about you sleeping are cool. You know, and the coolest thing about Keith Richards is you can look it up on YouTube. He's actually, it's in like an early concert film. They're like, they're, he's playing Satisfaction, and some crazy fan runs on stage in the middle of it, but Keith's like, sees the guy, takes off his guitar, hits the guy with his guitar, straps it back on, doesn't miss a note. That's, that's what it says. I don't, they say a lot of comedians want to be rock stars. You know, that's true for me because there's no equivalent like that in comedy. You know what I mean? You don't go on YouTube. There's no video like Rodney Dangerfield. Like some old videos like, hey, yeah, uh, my wife's a terrible cook. Uh, <laughs> How do you get bones and toast? I'm trying to do it, guys. Thanks a lot.